Uh, but if you ask me what, what it takes to become a good teacher, I wouldn't really know what to tell you. Personally, I believe uh, it's impossible to teach. It's possible to learn. So I'm mostly focusing on my students' learning rather than on my teaching. So if you extrapolate, in order to become a good teacher, one needs to want to and learn to be one. Uh, I'm in a good company here. So Abington has a very good tradition. But there is still some space on this slide. <laughs> um, so babies and parents. Uh, I don't need to explain to this audience that parenting is teaching, and teaching is much like parenting. Um, so what, what do we usually want for our children? We want them to build a house, plant a tree, and raise a child. What do children want, though? Uh, they want candies, TVs, and, and games. Um, if we transfer that to academics, what do our academic children want? Students. Uh, this is the academic candy, an easy A. Uh, and this is another thing they very much attracted to. Uh, what do academic parents want for, for students? Well, we want them to graduate and build a house, plant a tree, and raise a child. <laughs> But, but they should be well deserved. And I can't think of a worse use of candies as replacing the real food. When I was preparing for this talk, I was shocked to learn about the Atlanta cheating scandal. If you were not following, uh, school uh, teachers were fixing students' grades at the standardized tests. And here is the numerical summary of the story. And what's most shocking to me, at least, is this number. It was going on for 10 years. Can you imagine? It's a whole generation of students, and they wasted 10 years of their life. And they may be even thinking that they were doing fine. Okay? They were happy. Uh, so I guess it's the main question. Uh, are teachers really after making the students happy? I would say no. We are to make them, we're not to make them happy right now, we're to make them happy in the long run. So, um, what's the ultimate goal of teaching? And in the past it's been, uh, when our students graduate, we wanted them to be competitive with graduates of other universities. Okay? <laughs> it may become a very near future that our students, our alumni, uh, we'll be competing with robots. Not to offend our robotics people. Um, so, how can a human compete with a robot? It's hard. And it's easy. Humans just need to do something robots can't. I guess our art colleagues are protected for now. For now. But, uh, what's for the rest of us? It's, it's actually, the answer is just around us. I want to use this quote. Uh, humans can create and discover, and that, that's exactly where we can be machines. Uh, and here is my personal perspective on what we need to, to make sure students, uh, the, the skills that students need to develop uh, during the years here. Uh, we need to develop thinking. Make some but it's, um, it's true. Uh, we need to make sure students are trainable and flexible. And one big reason for that is the job that will be most demand 10 years from now doesn't exist today. We cannot train them 10 years ahead. That's reality. So we have to develop these skills. Uh, and the most important skill that they need, they need to learn in college is how to learn and how to learn quickly. Faster than robots. So, uh, what is learning? My biology colleagues will tell you that uh, learning is changing the brain. Uh, let me uh, introduce this 
nice gentleman, uh, John von Neumann, one of the greatest mathematicians of the 20th century and the founding father of the computer. Uh, he wrote a very interesting popular book that's called The Computer and the Brain. And the main message that I took from this book was, if the brain has a structure similar to that of a typical computer, the brain would be operating very, very slowly. So what our brain is, is a very complicated biological thinking machine. So maybe uh, we could use that to, to the advantage of our students. Um, and um, to conclude, we teach students and we learn from them. As you know, our incoming freshmen are going to be participating in the Common Reader program in the fall. What's good for our students should be good for us, right? And I'd like to propose, and I know my, some of my English colleagues already like the idea, propose uh, the Faculty Common Reader program. And this is the book that I want to bring up. It's where I stole the title from. Uh, the Art of Changing the Brain, uh, written by James Zoll, a neuroscience professor at Case Western. Uh, in the book, he explains in a very popular terms how we can use our knowledge of brain to develop successful teaching techniques. And when I was reading this book, I had this strong feeling I could just literally take every other paragraph from the book, frame it, and hang on the wall. That, that's how much I like it. Um, but I will just quote one paragraph in the very beginning, it's in red. Inevitably, I realize that if a teacher has any success at all, she has produced physical change in her student's brain. Teaching is the art of changing the brain. Thank you for your attention.